Hello, mind mappers, and welcome to the video. I've got a very interesting book for you today. Tiny Habits by BJ Fogg, PhD. The small changes that change everything. Inside this book, there are a few techniques to build new habits that I don't think we've ever covered before on the channel. They're scientifically backed, and I've tested them in my own life, and they are very, very powerful. With that, let's get directly into the introduction. I want to give you a quote that I pulled from the book that I think gives us a good, night, good idea of what we can expect to learn. Tiny is mighty, at least when it comes to change. Over the last 20 years, I found that most everyone wants to make some kind of change. Eat healthier, lose weight, exercise more, reduce stress, or get better sleep. We want to be better parents and partners. We want to be more productive and creative. But the alarming levels of obesity, sleeplessness, and stress reported by the media and seen in my Stanford Labs research tell me there's a painful gap between what people want to do and what they actually do. The disconnect between what people want and do has been blamed on a lot of different things, but people blame it on themselves for the most part. They internalize the culture message of it's your fault, you should exercise more, but you aren't doing it, so shame on you. I'm here to say it isn't your fault and creating positive change isn't as hard as you think. So we've been talking a lot about self-compassion on the channel. So I love that BJ kind of opens up this book with, hey, let's start with a little bit of self-compassion. Well, really what we pulled from this main quote here is, what kind of change do we want to make? Everyone probably wants to change something about their lives. They want to eat healthier, exercise more, be better at work, or sleep better. Actually, that thing that we want to change has probably been on our minds for years. Maybe we've tried multiple times and failed to accomplish the change. How did you react when that change didn't happen? Here's a helpful quote. If there's one concept from my book I hope that you embrace, it's this. People change best by feeling good and not by feeling bad. In other words, give yourself a break. Try and stop over-dramatizing your failures and instead celebrate your wins. More on this later, but I think that's a new and novel concept when it comes to goal setting and habit development. Give yourself a break. Instead of focusing on the failures and what you need to change, focus on what you're already doing well. So what else are we going to look at inside of Tiny Habits? We are not the problem. Our approach to change is. It's a design flaw and not a personal flaw. The essence of Tiny Habits is this. Take a behavior that you want, make it tiny, find where it naturally fits in your life, and nurture its growth. If you want to change for the long term, it's best to start small. And that's really what the title is all about as well, right? We've got this interesting mix of self-compassion and breaking things down until they're very, very small. I think this is the perfect way to build habits in a step-by-step -step way. With mind mapping, you can get the most out of these mind maps by following along. Find the process of how I mind map plus all of the mind map templates available on this channel for free at the link below. Following along will help you learn more, remember better, and apply these books to your life. And our first big idea is actually an equation. B equals map. You can change your life by changing your behaviors, and you already know that. But what you may not know is that only three variables really drive those behaviors. The FOG behavior model is the key to unlocking that mystery. It represents the three universal elements of behavior and their relationship to one another. It's based on principles that show us how these elements work together to drive our energy, to drive our every action, from flossing one tooth to running a marathon. Once you understand the behavior model, you can analyze why a behavior happened, which means you can stop blaming your behavior on the wrong things, like your character, self-discipline, just for starters. And you can choose my model, and you can use my model to design for a change in behavior in your life and in other people. So B equals map. What is that actually? That means that behavior happens when motivation and ability and prompt converge all at the same point. So step one in behavior change really is just understanding this fog behavior model. That means understanding how your behaviors really happen. 
taking the pressure off your willpower, your character, or your discipline, and putting it in, instead into the scientific formula B equals MAP. Behaviors happen for a reason, and it's not because of a personal failure on you, or even worse, something that someone else did to you. We need to take accountability, but we also need to know that it's not our fault a behavior happened. Behaviors happen because of our motivation plus our ability plus our prompt all converge at the same point. So motivation is our desire to do a behavior, our want to do the new behavior that we're trying to get ourselves to do. Ability is our capacity to do the behavior and prompt is our cue to get the behavior done. So you can see here that this is kind of the graph of the fog behavior model. We've got this axis here, which is motivation, this axis here, which is ability. And then in the middle, you can see this action line where prompts are going to fail below and they're going to succeed above. So the higher your motivation, the easier it is going to be for you to actually make the difference. You actually get the thing done. And the same with the ability. But really, we want to control the two different things of motivation and ability. We want our motivation to be as high as possible, and we want our ability to be as high as possible so that we can make the smallest prompt actually cross us over that action line. So let's look into a behavior change that you want. What is it? Positive or negative? Do you want to start a new behavior or do you want to stop a negative behavior? Both of those will work. Next, let's look at your motivation. Where are you at on this graph of motivation? Are you all the way up at the very top? You're super highly motivated or are you all the way at the very bottom? You're not very highly motivated. This can be a little bit of a tricky question as well. You might really want to get rid of this behavior in the moment, but you might not want it a day from now, two days from now, a week from now, or when that behavior actually starts to happen. Next, let's look at your ability. Where are you at on this graph? Do you have a high level of ability? Do you have the, uh, the easy to do or do you have the hard to do? Is it difficult for you to do the thing that you're asking yourself to do or is it easy? You can obviously control this in two ways. Number one, you can get better at your ability, your ability to do the thing, or you can make the thing a little bit easier and it increases your ability, making it easier to do. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Finally, let's think about the prompts. What are they? No behavior happens without a prompt. That's where this action line comes in. You might have super high motivation and super high ability, but if you don't have a prompt, you're not going to get anything done. Moving on, we're going to talk about our next big idea here. I think this is really the core idea in the book. Tiny habits. What do they look like? How do we create them? How can we use them to our advantage? This is really what it's all about. Number one, we need an anchor moment, an existing routine like brushing our teeth or an event that happens like a phone ringing. The anchor moment reminds us to do the behavior that we've set out to do, this new tiny behavior. Step number two is we need a new tiny behavior, a simple version of the new habit that we want, such as just flossing one tooth or doing two push-ups. You can do the tiny behavior immediately after the anchor moment. So the anchor moment is really kind of controlling the prompt, the prompt being the most important part of the equation. Step number two, tiny behavior, that's controlling our ability. And step number three, instant celebration, is controlling our motivation. Something you do to create positive emotions. We talked about this before. Such as saying, I did a really good job. You celebrate immediately after doing the new tiny behavior. So what does a tiny habit look like? It looks like an anchor, a behavior, and a celebration. So the best way to get above the action line is to follow the ABCs, the anchor, behavior, celebration. The goal here is to make things as easy as possible and create a repeatable habit. Each one of the ABCs accomplishes that. Let's look at my ABCs. First, I wanted to create a practice of daily meditation. My anchor is every morning I drink coffee without fail. Attach the meditation to that. Tiny behavior. All I need to do is sit on the couch without distraction. There's no real practice needed. I don't have to do 20 minutes of meditation in the morning and 20 minutes at night, as I might have previously tried to get myself to do. And then instant celebration. This is something I need to work on, but hell yeah has a nice ring to it. I sit down on the couch without the distractions. I have my coffee in my hand 
and I meditate even just for two minutes, hell yeah, I did it again. That's like me. The crazy part is that once we do our first tiny action, we're much more likely to do more. When I'm on my couch, undistracted, I generally feel like taking some long deep breaths. Sometimes I even feel like chanting a mantra. But enough about me. Here's some actionable steps for the behavior design process. We're looking at, let's get these ABCs going. How can we get the ABCs started in our life? What are the ABCs again? We've got anchor. We've got anchor behavior celebration. Step number one, clarify your aspiration. For me, that was, I want to start a meditation practice. Step number two is explore the different behavior options. So I might look at different things that, oh, maybe I could do mantra meditation. Maybe I could do yoga. What's right for me? And then step number three, match with specific behaviors. So let's decide which one am I going to do? Step number four, start tiny. How can I make this absolutely on my worst possible day easy to do? How can we make it as easy as possible, even if I am I slept two hours last night and my day was just absolutely horrible to keep that habit going? Step number five is to find a good prompt. For me, this is perfect because I drink coffee every morning without fail. Most of us brush our teeth every single morning without fail. Most of us go to work every weekday without fail. There's a lot of different anchor moments. We'll talk more about those later but you can use those as prompts because they're very unlikely to change. Step number six is, of course, celebrate your success. How often do we do something and then we don't actually say, you know what, you did a good job. You did good. That was difficult. Sitting on that couch was something that you wouldn't have done yesterday or the day before, or you wouldn't have actually done it if you didn't put a little bit of effort in and start celebrating our success. Hell yeah, that's like me. I'm the type of person that does this. Good job. Step number seven is to troubleshoot, iterate, and expand. Of course, the tiny habit is not the be-all and end-all. We are going to need to expand it later on, but only after we've actually made it a habit. Iterate might be, you know what? I couldn't do the tiny habit for a couple of days. Maybe I need to change this up. Maybe I need to do something a little different. And that's the same with troubleshooting. If you're having trouble getting yourself to do the tiny habit, maybe you didn't make it tiny enough. So our next point is about anchors. And this is huge. Again, prompts, the most important part of our BMAP equation, and anchors are the best prompts that we can find. You already have a lot of reliable routines, and each of them can serve as an action prompt for a new habit. You put your feet on the floor in the morning, you boil water for tea, and you turn on the coffee maker. You flush the toilet, you drop your kid off at school, you hang your coat up when you walk through the door at the end of the day. You put your head on a pillow every single night. These actions are already embedded in your life, so seamlessly and naturally that you don't actually have to think about them. And because of that, they make fantastic prompts. It's an elegant design solution because it's actually so natural. You already have an entire ecosystem of routines humming along nicely, and you just have to tap into it. Action prompts are so much more useful than person prompts and context prompts that I've actually given them a name, anchors. When we talk about tiny habits, I use the term anchor to describe something in your life that is already stable and solid. The concept is pretty simple. If there's a habit that you want, find the right anchor within your current routine to serve as your prompt, your reminder. I select the term anchor because you you are attaching your new habit to something solid and reliable. So for me, this anchor idea is maybe the most life-changing. Finding a routine that I'm going to do no matter what and attaching the new tiny habit to it has been game-changing for me. And why is that? Well, for me, it's because the most important of BMAP is the prompts. They are the invisible driver of our lives because no behavior actually happens without a prompt. You can disrupt the behavior you don't want by removing the prompt. This isn't always easy, but removing the prompt is the best first move to stop a behavior from happening. Prompts are so important that no behavior actually happens without them. And that's why anchors are so useful to us. 
These are the specific things that you already do each day without fail. And there's a ton of them. Drinking coffee, brushing your teeth, going to bed each night. They're powerful because you can count on these prompts. You know they're going to be there tomorrow. And when you're trying to create a new habit, you need something to hold on to. Something that's going to happen each time. Anytime we're doing some type of change, it's very important to have an anchor with us. Anytime we're going to build a new habit, the best way to build it is to attach it to an anchor. Then we would use this basic algorithm, one that we've talked about many times over on the channel. Gabrielle Otengen really brings it up in her book, Rethinking Positive Thinking. I recommend that you check it out. But this basic algorithm would be, after I do my anchor, then I will do the new habit. For example, for me, after I make my coffee, I will sit on the couch and begin my meditation. That's a simple if-then statement. Again, really talked about a lot in Gabrielle Otengen's book, Rethinking Positive Thinking. I recommend you check it out. It's a very, very good book. Now, we're going to set up some anchor algorithms for you. AAs. What is something you do each day in the morning? Let's think about this. Yours might be... Mine is, after I brew my coffee, I'll sit down and I enjoy it in mindfulness. What's something that you do each day in the afternoon? After I finish work for the day, I take my dog for a walk every single day in nature and I clear my head. Finishing work is my anchor and going for a walk is my action. What is something that you do at work repeatedly? After I BRB inside of my work, if we say BRB if we're going away from the computer for a minute, I go to the bathroom, do whatever I'm going to normally do, make a tea, make a coffee, whatever it is. I do 10 push-ups and 10 bodyweight rows before I get back to the actual work of the day. So I kind of have these natural breaks in my day and I've attached 10 push-ups, 10 bodyweight rows to it to help me stay in better shape. Then we want to think about how we can attach these new habits. Let's think about my anchors. Let's think about what things I can do, what things I want to get done, and hopefully we can attach these new habits to these anchors. Now, you might need to start super tiny. Those 10 push-ups, 10 bodyweight rows might be one squat. It might be one push-up. It might be something very, very small that doesn't take a ton of time, doesn't take a ton of energy for you to get done. But the idea is you start tiny and then you allow for expansion. Our final point here is about shine. And we did already talk about this before, but I think it bears repeating because it's something that we don't do enough of. What might surprise you is this. In English, we don't have a perfect word for describing the positive feeling we get from experiencing success. I've read piles of scientific literature on related topics, and I've done my own research in this area. And I'm convinced that we are lacking a good word. So with the encouragement of three of the world's expert in human emotion, I decided to create a new word for feeling success. Ready? I call this feeling shine. You know this feeling already. You feel shine when you ace an exam. You feel shine when you give a great presentation and clap at the end. You feel shine when you smell something delicious that you cooked for the first time. I believe my celebration technique is the breakthrough in habit formation. I hope you can see why. By skillfully celebrating, you create the feeling of shine, which in turn causes your brain to encode the new habit and really increases your motivation for getting it done. If I could teach you tiny habits in person, I would start our training by focusing on celebrations. I would help you find celebrations that are natural and effective for you. We would practice them together and it would be a blast. I would train you in celebrations before teaching you about the fog behavior model or the power of simplicity or anchors or recipes for tiny habits. Celebrations would be first because it's the most important skill for creating habits. It really is the most important skill and one that no one has really been talking about as far as I can tell. No one has really built this into the system and I certainly didn't have it built into my system before I read this book. Celebrating our wins. Pretty much the opposite of what most of, most of us are doing right now. In fact, instead of celebrating our wins, most of us spend our time actively tearing ourselves down for our mistakes. I know I'm definitely falling prey to this um, time and time again. I'm really noticing a lot of my life now that I've dedicated myself so much to celebrating the wins 
I'm noticing just how quick my mind is to tear myself down for the mistakes, but this shine activity definitely helps. Emotions are actually what creates our habits. Feeling good about what we've done is important. That feeling hits us in the reward center in our mind and encourages us to do it again. The most addictive things on earth really circumvent this process via introducing those chemicals into our mind exogenously. But through the power of skill and celebrating our wins immediately with an intensity, we can create a positive feedback loop in a healthy way. So what might this look like? Adding a little shine into our lives. Right after accomplishing a new habit, a new tiny habit, by the way, two push-ups, flossing one tooth, or forgoing the old one, do a little fist pump and say yes, 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 or whatever's natural to you. I really like one that says, I'm on a winning streak, or that's like me, or just a simple yes would suffice as well. To each their own. Final word from BJ on tiny habits. Celebration will one day be ranked alongside mindfulness and gratitude as daily practices that contribute most to overall happiness and well-being. If you learn just one thing from my entire book, I hope it's this. Celebrate your tiny successes. This one small shift in your life can have a massive impact even when you feel there is no way up or out of your situation. Celebration can be a lifeline. So we started the book off with self-compassion, which I love, and we're finishing it off, I believe, with active self-compassion. Actively saying that we're winning, actively congratulating ourselves, actively kind of celebrating, actively shining. And I think that this book, more than any other book I've read on habits, focuses on the positive sum game of building habits. The upward spiral of celebrating your wins and being kind to yourself. Along with a ton of other great ideas with tiny habits, starting small, and finding your anchors, this is my favorite book on habits so far. If you want to talk about habits, I'm not going to offer this to everyone, only the people that watched all the way through the video, but if you want to talk about habits, how to build them, if you want to talk about self-compassion or what shining really looks like, I will invite you to apply for a free coaching call down below. I can't offer it to everyone, but if I feel like I could be of service to you, I would be happy to. Click the link down below and apply for a free coaching session with me, and I'll be sure to show up and give you everything you need on that call. Thanks for being with me here today. Hope to see you in the next one.